The Russians don't understand but one language, and that's strength, it's force, it's power, it's might. And I think that any, any man that's, that's negotiating with the Russians uh, is handicapped if he's reducing the strength that's behind his negotiations. I believe as General Marshall uh, that said that uh, negotiations that are not supported by strength can only result in appeasement. And if you'll analyze that, you'll see it's just about uh, right. in the history of science. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. I feel impelled to speak today in a language that, in a sense, is new. One which I, who have spent so much of my life in the military profession, would have preferred never to use. That new language is the language of atomic warfare. The Soviet Union has informed us that over recent years it has devoted extensive resources to atomic weapons. The knowledge now possessed by several nations will eventually be shared by others, possibly all of them. In your opinion, are we maintaining a position of strength, of leadership, in comparison with Russia? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. Um, I think that we are maintaining our leadership in the all-important uh, field of uh, nuclear weapons. We have never sought to keep up with the Russians and ground forces. That's impossible. They bankrupt us because an American private, not a private first class, but an American private, gets practically the equivalent pay of a Russian brigadier general. We just can't afford to match them on, on ground forces. But uh, we have, by maintaining our lead in the field of uh, atomic and hydrogen weapons and in the means to deliver them, Does that include maintained our uh, <laughs> overall supremacy. Now, of course, the Russians are making vast progress in that field, and no one knows just when they will overtake us. I don't think they have Senator. yet, but uh, they are making great progress. And it would be very little a reassurance to us to have 10,000 bombs if the Russians had 1,000, because 1,000 could destroy uh, the, the ability to wage war industrially of either country. Senator, you're one of the uh, Senate's leading uh, experts on military affairs, well, and thank you. I uh, wanted to ask you in that connection uh, whether uh, there wasn't, whether the loss of Vietnam would be a very rude and very great strategic uh, blow for us, uh, perhaps costing us further in the south, uh, southwest Pacific and southwest uh, Asia. Uh, I think that as of today that the loss of uh, South Vietnam would be a larger, uh, would be a, a, a worse blow to our world prestige and to our reputation for main keeping our word uh, under all conditions than it would be from either a strategic or a tactical or an economic standpoint. I don't think it has any value uh, strategically. And if we can depend on our missiles to defend us from here, why well, we don't have to have South Vietnam to hold back the uh, uh, hordes of, of, of communism. Senator, can we carry it just to one more point? Could you clarify this? And the implication of what you say, that we should have all the weapons necessary, carries us, of course, to atomic weapons and to tactical weapons. You, do you or do you not have that in mind? No, I do not. We, we've got them running out of our ears. We, we, we've, that's, that's one area where there's no shortage. We've got uh, plenty of atomic weapons, but uh, 
I think everyone knows that we're not going to fire the first atomic uh, uh, weapon unless it's in a, a moment of very uh, great uh, desperation and when the lives of thousands of American citizens are, are involved. The Congress had uh, passed a resolution. I wrote the final draft of it in my own hand. I was chairman of the acted as chairman of the two committees on foreign relations and armed services to handle it, that uh, <coughs> restated the Monroe Doctrine, we'd been getting away from that, and also said that uh, any offensive weapons in Cuba would be an act of aggression against the United States, or in substance, said that. So I told the president there that day, I said, Mr. President, this is the last time we'll have a reason for doing it. We can go in and get these missiles and hold them up and say, now here they are, they're getting ready to attack us. But if you follow your policy, I don't doubt what it will work. But we'll never have another reason for, for getting Craig Castro out of there. And as long as he's there, he's going to be a cancer on the body of this hemisphere. I'm still convinced that if we'd gone in there and cleaned up Castro and communism and let the people of Cuba have an election for their own government, that we wouldn't be in this trouble in Vietnam now. I haven't believed in being a world policeman, and I have tried my best to keep them from embarking on these smaller uh, adventures. we just drawn into them by uh, uh, our so-called allies and friends in international relations and by our desire to keep the United Nations functioning. I'm, I'm in favor of the United Nations functioning, but I, I have no faith whatever in the United Nations as a, as a defense for this country, not the slightest. There's a force at work in this country that's cultivating a, a mistrust of the military and uh, a feeling that uh, we ought to uh, tremendously reduce our defenses. They do it by uh, raising the question of prior arches, for example, between a hungry child and a machine gun. Now, who's, who's going to say, let's get the machine gun and let the child stay hungry? Uh, you, you can't say it. But it's, uh, it's, it's really a, uh, it's, it's, it's not that narrow a question. Unless we do have the machine gun, that child will never have any opportunities, whatever, to grow up in a free society, in my opinion.